Merry Christmas, this is Brother Taylor. Christmas brings to mind ribbons and tinsel, crinkly wrapping paper. In truth, nothing is as fun as watching a toddler frantically rip open mom's immaculate, beautiful wrapping. Even better is when dad wraps his gifts with duct tape. It's humbling to think that the first Christmas present was a child. Even today, nothing tugs at the heartstrings like a newborn baby. Surely Mary and Joseph were overcome with happiness as they stared at the greatest gift ever given, our Savior in a manger. The peace Mary and Joseph felt must have been short-lived. Soon, they would have to make a trip to Egypt, a long and expensive journey. We know that Mary and Joseph were of humble means, and surely this journey would have caused great distress to them. What a blessing to have mysterious wise men from the East bring forth three wonderful gifts, frankincense, gold, and myrrh. These gifts were most rare and precious. Not only was this a beautiful miracle, but the story of the kings brings a magic and a wonder to Christmas that is still felt today. No Christmas story would be complete without mentioning the shepherd's sheep, Mary's donkey, and the stable animals. Throughout his life, Jesus Christ would speak of and would use animals in his teachings. He would speak of the raven, the sparrow, and the ox. He himself would be called the lamb and the lion. It is no wonder that our Savior, our champion of the weak, and lowly in heart and mind would have a place in his heart for the beast of this earth. Jesus, our brother, kind and good, was humbly born in a stable room, and the friendly beasts around him stood. Jesus, our brother, said the donkey shaggy and brown I carried his mother up hill and down I carried her safely to Bethlehem town I said the donkey shaggy and brown I said the cow all I gave him my hay to pillow his head. I said the cow all white and red. I said the sheep with the holy horn. I gave him my wolf with blanket long, and he walked. Cooed him to sleep
said the dove from the rafters high. I said the camel yellow and black. Over the desert upon my back, I brought him a gift in the wise man's pack. I said the camel yellow and black. Thus every Stable dark was glad to tell of the gift he gave Emmanuel. The gift he gave Emmanuel. While most Christmas Eves are celebrated with cookies, songs, stories, and delightful traditions, many years ago, one man's Christmas Eve came coupled with a promise of death and a sword over his head. In the ancient Americas on that fateful night, the prophet Nephi and a few of his followers awaited the sign of Christ's birth. Gideon robbers, powerful and evil, awaited with a nefarious hunger to take the lives of these righteous few. For should a sign not appear, then they would be killed. I can imagine the faith of this mighty prophet as he expectedly looked up into the sky with joy must have shook the earth when the last star appeared. Surely a reverent silence spread through the land on this holy night. What a Christmas Eve to remember. 1914 was not a happy year for the world. The earth was scourged with bombs and stained with innocent blood as World War I made its way into history. But on December 24th, 1914, along the Western Front, fire ceased and the weapons were lowered on both sides. American and German soldiers covered in blood and mud arose from miserable trenches to celebrate Christmas together. They sang carols, played soccer, and exchanged stories. For one night, the air was free of smoke, explosions, and death. For one night, there was sacred silence.
Christmas is a celebration, not a somber occasion with melancholy words and downcast faces. Rather, it is a triumphant and joyous event. Even the prophet Joseph Smith spent his last Christmas feasting and dancing. The increased love and joy we feel during this season is hard to ignore. Pope John the 23rd said, mankind is a great and immense family. This is proved by what we feel in our hearts at Christmas. So make some hot chocolate, listen to Bing Crosby, laugh with friends and tell some jokes and celebrate the glory of the newborn King. At the climax of the 1946 classic film, It's a Wonderful Life, George's young daughter, Zuzu, exclaims, Teacher says every time a bell rings, an angel gets its wings. Believe that or not, angels are an integral part of Christmas. The Christmas story begins with an angel who appears to Mary. Angels sing in the heavens, appeared to the shepherds, and warned Joseph in dreams. Angels testified of the divinity of Christ's child. The greatest authors in history cannot conjure up such marvelous stories, especially one with angels who sing, spread the good news, and preach of Christ. Even as angels attended the birth of Christ, they are also with us today. As taught by Elder Jeffrey R. Holland, one of the things that will become more important in our lives the longer we live is the reality of angels. Their work and their ministry, personal ministry, angels who are with us, around us, empowered to help us, and who do exactly that. We too can be angels by drowning out the negativity of the world with words that uplift messages that edify, and by selfishly reaching out to love and to serve others.
In the classic novel, The Tale of Two Cities, Charles Dickens wrote of the great conflict between good and evil. When he penned these lines, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. It was a season of light. It was a season of darkness. It was the spring of hope. It was the winter of despair. We had everything before us. Truly that can be said of any time in history, especially our own. Instead of focusing on the worst, Christmas reminds us to focus on the best of our lives and selves and in each other. As the classic character Ebenezer Scrooge promised, I will honor Christmas in my heart and try to keep it all the year. It's in the singing of a street corner choir. It's going home and getting warm by the fire. It's true wherever you find love, it feels like Christmas. A cup of kindness that we share with another, a sweet reunion with a friend or a brother. In all the places you find love, it feels like Christmas. It is the season of the heart, a special time of caring, the ways of love made clear. It is the season of the spirit, the message if we hear it, is make it last all year. of a gift to another, a pair of mittens that were made by your mother. In all the ways that we show love, it feels like Christmas. A part of childhood we'll always remember, it is the summer of the soul in December. Yes, when you do your best for love, it feels like Christmas. It is the season of the heart, a special time of caring. The ways of love made clear. It is the season of the spirit. The message, if we hear it, is make it last all year. It's in the singing of a street corner choir. It's going home and getting warm by the fire. It's true wherever you find love. Like Christmas, it's true wherever you find love, it feels like Christmas. It feels like Christmas. It feels like Christmas. It feels like Christmas. It is no coincidence that the symbol of Christ's birth was a bright star in the night sky. The world is no stranger to difficult times. War, pestilence, plague, and personal tragedies bring darkness that can feel overwhelming. Yet Christ has conquered these battles for us. His gift of light, love, and mercy is offered to all. Just like the star in the sky, He lights the world of darkness and confusion. May we keep the spirit of Christmas year-round by appreciating the incredible gift of His life and atoning sacrifice, by reaching out to bless the lives of others, and by letting Him prevail in our own lives. <laughs>